Hi, it's Dr. Ronald Lett. We're on our module on basic orthopedics. Lesson four on plaster or Paris immobilization. We immobilize extremities after reduction of a fracture, a dislocation, or for undisplaced fractures. You don't need x-rays to do a reduction, especially in the health center situation. You should check the pulse, and if the fracture is displaced and the limb doesn't look right, just make it look right. It won't be perfect, but it will be better. Now, what should you be doing? Mainly, you should be doing splints, back slabs, and casts less often, and usually after the swelling's gone down as a completion of a back slab. So, we are going to show you how to do splints and casts but mainly we're going to emphasize splints in the upcoming part of this lesson. We are going to proceed with plaster paris immobilization of the upper extremity. Before we do anything, we check and see if there are any injuries to the skin. They should be cleansed and dressed. We're assuming a forearm fracture in this patient. So can you please support his limb while I put on padding? We need to pad the extremity well because the hard plaster can damage the underlying skin. Not quite that high. You don't want the elbow too tightly elevated. And you try and not have excessive wrinkling of the padding. Now, in fracture management, you immobilize the joint above and below the fracture. So in this case, we haven't quite made it to the wrist. We would want to immobilize both the elbow and the wrist. So we'll add some padding and we'll go a little bit higher so that the wrist can be immobilized. Then we'll come back, make sure we have adequate padding, particularly at the elbow. Bony prominences like the elbow can be problematic and adding padding protects them. So there we have applied padding to the upper extremity. Okay, can I have some plaster please? So we're just going to use a plaster bandage and turn it into a splint. How long should the splint be? It depends on the patient. We measure just using the bandage itself. So it should be this long. So I'm going to take this bandage and roll it out to make a splint. If you're concerned that the patient is a bit rambunctious, you might want to make the splint even thicker. But we're going to use one bandage. We put it in warm water, not hot water. And the warm water allows the chemical reaction in the plaster to proceed. We squeegee out the water. You don't want it dry. We won't want it too wet. We then apply the plaster to the extremity. It's a bit long here, I'll just fold it back. Now we will secure it in place with a tensor bandage.
We roll the tensor gently. I'm not pulling on it. I'm not tightening it. We just want it to be secured in place. We haven't quite made it. Can I have one more, please? Now you will have to wait for the plaster to harden. Depends on the quality of the plaster, how long that takes. Do we have a, a clip to hold this in place? Okay, it's still a bit soft, but we're going to proceed by putting in a sling. You will have learned how to do a sling in the previous videos. We put the long part of the sling to the axis of his body. As we learned before, bring it around. and tie it on the opposite side from the fracture. The patient should be comfortable, relax their arm. The hand should be supported. And there we have it. A mobilization of the upper extremity with plaster of Paris and supporting it with an arm sling. We will proceed with a short arm cylindrical cast. This is used for Collie's fracture, which may be undisplaced, or if it has been displaced and reduced, the degree of trauma is minimal, so we don't expect a lot of swelling. In the short arm cast, we are not following the principle of immobilizing the joint above and below. So this is not useful for a fracture where there is major displacement. So can we just hold her arm there? So for the cylindrical cast, Oops, I wanted to make it long arm, but we don't need to. We're not making it long arm. We just make sure that we have enough padding. We are immobilizing the wrist. Just put a little hole in the padding. We want to make it in the neutral position. If it requires some more manipulation than that, then probably the short arm cast is not the best choice. So one roll of padding is sufficient. So if we can just put her in the neutral position, like you're shaking her hand. Now, we add to that plaster. We put the plaster on in this direction so that you don't tighten it. You just roll it on without stretching it because you don't want to make it too tight. The quality there is not perfect. And we just go up. Can we keep it in position? Oh, 
want to make sure the wrist is immobilized. And certainly one roll of plaster is sufficient. You'll see some places where there's dry spots in the plaster. You, should, you just get some water and you put it on and you massage the water in to make sure that you don't see any holes. And you then just allow it to dry. And there you have a short arm immobilization of the wrist. Thank you for watching and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure to subscribe and like us on YouTube. If you would like more information about CNIS or on how to become our member, please go to www.cnis.ca.